now, and we're going to turn to the Old Testament, and we're turning to 1 Kings chapter number 13, please. 1 Kings chapter number 13. It's powerful how the Lord brings messages and how the Lord confirms them. We had a lion in our children's talk. We actually have a lion in the message here this morning. All right, 1 Kings chapter number 13, and we're going to commence to read from verse number 1. 1 Kings chapter 13, verse number 1, And behold, there came a man of God out of Judah by the word of the Lord unto Bethel. And Jeroboam stood by the altar to burn incense. And he cried against the altar in the word of the Lord, and said, O altar, altar, thus saith the Lord, Behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name, and upon thee shall he offer the priests of the high places that burn incense upon me, and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. And he gave a sign the same day, saying, This is the sign which the Lord hath spoken. Behold, the altar shall be rent, and the ashes that are upon it shall be poured out. And it came to pass when the king Jeroboam heard the saying of the man of God which had cried against the altar in Bethel, that he put forth his hand from the altar, saying, Lay hold on him. And his hand which he put forth against him dried up, so that he would not pull it in again to him. The altar, the altar also was rent, and the ashes poured out from the altar according to the sign which the man of God had given by the word of the Lord. And the king answered and said unto the man of God, Entreat now uh, the face of the Lord, thy, the Lord thy God, and pray for me, that my hand may be restored me again. And the man of God besought the Lord. And the king's hand was restored him again, and became as it was before. And the king said unto the man of God, Come home with me, and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. And the man of God said unto the king, if thou wilt give me half thine house, I will not go in with thee, neither will I eat bread or drink water in this place. For so was it charged me by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread, nor drink water, nor turn again by the same way that thou camest. So he went another way, and returned not by the way that he came to Bethel. Now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel. And his sons came and told him all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel, the words which he had spoken unto the king. Then they told also to their father. And their father said unto them, What way went he? For his sons had seen what way the man of God went and came from Judah. And he said unto his sons, Saddle me the ass. So they, so they saddled him the ass, and he rode thereon. And, after, and went after the man of God, and found him sitting under an oak. And he said unto him, Art thou the man of God that camest from Judah? And he said, I am. Then he said unto him, Come home with me, and eat bread. And he said, I may not return with thee, nor go in with thee, neither will I eat bread, nor drink water with thee in this place. For it was said to me by the word of the Lord, Thou shalt not eat no bread, nor drink water there nor turn again to go by the way that thou camest. He said unto him, I am a prophet, also as thou art. And an angel spake unto me by the word of the Lord, saying, Bring him back with thee into thine house, that he may eat bread and drink water. But he lied unto him. And so he went back with him, and did eat bread in his house and drink water, and it came to pass. As they sat at the table, that the word of the Lord came unto the prophet that brought him back. And he cried unto the man of God that came from Judah, saying, Thus saith the Lord, For as much as thou hast disobeyed the mouth of the Lord, and hast kept, not kept the commandment which the Lord thy God commanded thee, but camest back, and hast eaten bread and drunk water in the place of the which the Lord did say to thee, Eat no bread and drink no water, Thy carcass shall not come unto the sepulcher of thy fathers. And it came to pass, after he had eaten bread and after he had drunk, that he saddled for him the ass to wit for the prophet whom he had brought back. And when he was gone, a lion met him by the way, 
and slew him. And his carcass was cast in the way, and the ass stood by it. The lion also stood by the carcass. And behold, men passed by and saw the carcass cast in the way, and the lion standing by the carcass. And they came and told it in the city where the old prophet dwelt. And when the prophet had brought, and when the prophet that brought him back from the way heard thereof, he said, It is the man of God who was disobedient unto the word of the Lord. Therefore the Lord hath delivered him unto the lion which hath torn him and slain him according to the word of the Lord which he spake unto him. And he spake to his son, saying, Saddle me the ass. And they saddled him. And he went and found his carcass cast in the way, and the ass and the lion standing by the carcass. The lion had not eaten the carcass, nor torn the ass. And we know that the Lord will add his blessing to that reading from his own precious truth. The title that I have placed upon God's message this morning is somewhat very unusual, is somewhat perhaps very strange. The title that I have placed upon God's message this morning came about that as I read this portion the other morning, the first thought entered my head was the foundation for the title that I have placed upon God's message. And the title that I'm placing upon God's message this morning is this, How a Christian Can Be Reduced to a Carcass how a Christian can be reduced to a carcass. Notice the story, child of God, this morning. It begins with the man being identified as the man of God. The passage begins with this man being identified as nobody but as the man of God. But the passage ends not with the same man being identified as the man of God, but as I identified as a carcass. He's identified, first of all, as the man of God, but not identified as the man of God at the end of the passage, but identified as a portion, as a carcass. How a Christian can be reduced to a carcass. How a Christian's testimony can be reduced to nothing more than a carcass. How a Christian's walk with God can be reduced to nothing, only a carcass. Yes, and how a Christian's lifetime's ministry can be reduced to nothing more than a lifeless carcass. Do you remember the words of the Lord Jesus in Matthew's Gospel, chapter 5, verse 13? He said to the believers in his day, he says, Ye are the salt of the earth. I want you to underline that this morning. That's the purpose. Ye are the salt of the earth. You and I, child of God, our purpose is, is to carry that savor in our lives that makes people thirst after the Lord Jesus Christ who is in our lives. We are to carry the flavor. We are to carry the savor of the Lord Jesus Christ wherever we are. But the Lord Jesus not only mentions the purpose, He mentions a possibility. Because the Lord Jesus says, but if the salt have lost its savor. How many Christians whose lives were vibrant, whose lives shone bright, who were really radiant for the Lord Jesus Christ, but, but no longer radiant. We can lose our savor for the Lord Jesus. But then he mentions the problem. It says, then wherewith shall it be resalted? And then he talks about the peril. It is thenceforth good for nothing but to be cast out, to be trodden under the foot of men. You know, friend, Christians can get to that place, you know, where their testimony is good for nothing. Their lives are good for nothing. And it comes to the place 
where the world tramps their testimony, where the world tramps their name underfoot. You see, child of God, this morning, do you remember what Nathan the prophet said to David when David sinned? Remember David was a man after God's own heart. And you remember in 2 Samuel chapter 12, verse number, verse number 11, David said, Nathan said to David, he says, because of this deed that thou hast done, thou hast given cause for the enemies of the Lord to blaspheme. The lesson in all of this this morning, child of God, is this. We have to take our Christian lives. We have to take our Christian testimonies. We have to take our work, walk with God seriously every day. Not just to be a Lord's Day Christian, but we have to take our walk with God, our Christian life seriously every moment of every day. How a Christian can be reduced to a carcass. When I read this portion of God's Word over the other morning, it carried this warning to my own heart. Never mind your heart or anybody else's heart, it carried a powerful warning to my heart, didn't it? And the warning that came to my heart was this. How fast and how far and how fatal Christians can fall. I want you to notice, it's not me that wants you to notice, it's God that wants us to notice. First of all, in this passage it begins with a man that was mighty. And the first thing you'll learn about this man that was mighty this morning, I want you to notice he was a man that was that was spiritual. He's identified here this morning as the man of God. We don't have the man's name. He's anonymous. Many great Christians who done a great work were nameless. You take the man who preached the night C. H. Spurgeon was converted. Nobody knew his name. Even the great Spurgeon never knew his name. He just called him an unknown substitute lay preacher. An old man living in America one snowing morning was on making his way to church every Lord's Day morning. And, the, and there was a wee girl kept looking through the window every Lord's Day morning at the old man that went to church. One morning, she says, it was a real snowy morning. There was a snow drift come down, a snowstorm. And this wee lassie says, he'll never go out this morning. But he did. He came out wrapped up in his cane, and he prodded his way. And she was so intrigued. She asked the man why it was so special at church that he even ventured out on such a morning. And the wee man told the wee girl, because I love the Lord Jesus. That old man brought that wee girl to Sunday school for the first time, and at that Sunday school, she got wonderfully and gloriously saved. She grew up and went to Bible college, and Bible college, she fell in love with a young fellow who also was a Christian, and both of them got married. Both of them had children. And one of those children happened to be Dr. Billy Graham. Nobody knew the name of the old man. Someone said once to Billy Graham, when you get to heaven, you're going to have some crown because of all the souls that you have led to the Lord. Billy Graham says, if the Lord allows me to have that crown, I'm not going to take it. I'm going to give it to the old man because he's the one who deserves it, not me. But here's the man of God this morning and he's spiritual this morning. And here's a man this morning who was controlled by the Word of the Lord. He wasn't only spiritual. Notice verse 2. He was faithful because he spoke in the Word of the Lord. He spoke against the idolatry. And he spoke against the sin that Jeroboam was committing by offering strange uh, 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 incense onto this altar. And the man of God was 
was preaching against the altar and about the judgment to come. This man of God this morning, it was a man that was mighty, a man who was spiritual, a man who was faithful, and that's what we need today. Men in pulpits who are spiritual and men in pulpits who are faithful. Need men today who will stand and speak against sin and for judgment to come and to preach Christ. He was a man, when I look at him at the start, a man who was controlled by and speaks in the Word of the Lord. The man wasn't only spiritual. Notice he wasn't only, he wasn't only uh, faithful. Notice he was prophetical. Because we read it here, he was preaching and preached about the judgment to come. And he says, and he, and he says in verse number 2, he says and said, O altar, O altar, behold, a child shall be born unto the house of David, Josiah by name, and upon thee shall he offer the priests in the high places that burn incense upon thee, and men's bones shall be burnt upon thee. This didn't take place until 300 years after he proclaimed the judgment. He was a man this morning who believed in what God told him to preach. That's what we need today. We need men today who believes in what God tells them to preach. We need men today in pulpits who don't preach what they want to preach, but preach what God tells them to preach. The man that was made. Then I want you to notice the instruction that was in tents. Because, you see, immediately after all of this, Jeroboam wanted this man to come and, and have something with him, something to eat with him. In verse number 7, the king said unto the man of God, Come home with me and, and refresh thyself, and I will give thee a reward. Verse number 8, And the man of God said unto the king, If thou wilt give me half thine house, I will not go in with thee, neither will I eat bread nor drink water in this place. For so it was charged me by the word of the Lord, saying, Eat no bread nor drink water, to nor turn again by the same way that thou camest. Do you know what this man of God teaches me? This man of God teaches me this morning the word of the Lord has got to be obeyed. It's got to be obeyed at all times. And it has got to be obeyed at all costs. And we're not to compromise our convictions no matter what the world offers us. The man of God failed this morning to go because he did not want to show tolerance to the sins of Jeroboam. You see, child of God, this is what we have to get into our minds today. You and I are not to show tolerance to the sin that is around us. James chapter 1 verse 27 says, we're to keep ourselves unspotted from the world. Galatians 1 and 4 says, who gave himself for us that he may deliver us from this present evil world. When I look back to the time before I was saved, before I came to know the Lord Jesus Christ, I walked in accordance to the God of this world, to the course of this world. And listen, child of God, the world expects you and I to be different from the world. The world expects us to be different. The Word of God this morning teaches us the Word of the Lord instructs us. The Word of the Lord illuminates to us this morning as to how we are to walk each day. And the Word of the Lord illuminates us, and the Word of the Lord instructs us as to how we are to live each day. The instruction that was intense. Do you see if the Lord speaks to you from His Word this morning? The Lord says to you this, this is the way, walk ye in it, no matter how difficult it may seem. The Word of the Lord is to be obeyed. The Word of the Lord has got to be obeyed totally and obeyed fully. 
thirdly, there's something else God wants to point out to us. And there's a lot of this going on today. I want you to notice the deceit that was deadly. The deceit that was deadly. Because in verse number 11, we read this. Now there dwelt an old prophet in Bethel, and his sons came and told them all the works that the man of God had done that day in Bethel. And so it goes, and, and you, know this, you know how it comes to how, how this prophet goes to him. And in verse 18, he said unto the man of God, but, but I am also a prophet. You see, this man of God refused the first offer that the prophet said, but then the prophet comes to him. The old man comes to him in verse 18. He says, Ah, but I'm a prophet, also as thou art. And he says, But do you know something? An angel of the Lord told me. An angel of the Lord told me by the word of the Lord. to bring thee back into mine house and to eat bread and to drink water. Boys, I can tell you here, there's a wee lesson in this. Not everybody that sounds spiritual is spiritually sound. Not everybody that sounds spiritual is spiritually sound. This boy talked about how he was a prophet and an angel of the Lord come and told him by the word of the Lord, you can come and you can come home with me and you can eat. And not everybody that talks spiritual is truly spiritual either. The old prophet says, an angel of the Lord told me by the word of the Lord, he showed me. Bring that man home with me. It was a downright lie. Do you know the kind of day we're living in? We're living in a day. We're living in a day. We're getting boys running about. And they're getting these revelations from God. And they're getting this from God. And they've been told this by God. And they've been told the other thing by God. And it wasn't of God at all. See, Spurgeon had a man came to him one day and said to him, Mr. Spurgeon, he was a spiritual, emotional man. He says, Mr. Spurgeon, the Lord has given me a message for next Lord's Day, and he wants me to preach it in your tabernacle. Spurgeon says, well, when the Lord tells me about it, you can go on ahead. If a man or a woman comes up to you, child of God, and tells you that the Lord tells you to do this and the Lord tells you to do that, just don't, don't you jump to it. First John tells you, four and one, believe, believe, beloved, believe not every spirit, but try the spirits whether they be of God, because many false prophets are gone into the world, and we're told that they're even deceiving the very elect. How do we try the spirits? We try them by the word of the Lord. You know, friend, this is how you catch them out. They'll tell you, oh, but the Lord showed me this, and the Lord told me this, and the Lord told me the other thing. Do you see if their claims contradict God's Word? It's a lie from the pit of hell. With boys today, and I'm telling you this, they're standing up on pulpits, and they're telling their congregation, God says it's all right to go out and drink, it's God says it's all right to go out and party, and God says this, and God says that, and God says the other, and it's lies. And they're leading young people today into spiritual shipwreck with it. And the Word of God, men may encourage us by the Word of God, and men may warn us by the Word of God, but beware, child of God, of men telling you what the God's will is for your life. 
See, when I got the call to come here, I had boys on, some pastors too. Oh, it's not you. It's not your field at all. I don't believe it. I don't believe it. Pastor, what that at all? You're an evangelist, man, dear. You're an evangelist. And some of them were pastors too. And if I had listened to them, I wouldn't have been here today. Make sure what you hear comes from God's Word. It's God's Word, remember. Verse 19, the folly that was followed. Boys, oh boys, here's the man of God, I'm telling you. So he went back with him and did eat bread in his house and drink water. Something here, the Word of God, something here the man of God teaches me, the Word of God can be disobeyed. Here's where it all goes wrong. Do you know the key text in this whole passage? The key text in this whole passage. The key text in this whole passage, 1 Kings 13, verse 26. You know what it says? It is the man of God who disobeyed the word of the Lord. That's the key text in this whole passage. It is the man of God who was disobedient unto the word of the Lord. You see, child of God, what I see in the old prophet is this. I see the cunning craft of apostasy. That's what I see. That's what God wants us to see. Boys who are running about telling you they've got big visions and revelations from God and there's going to be a new thing and this is what we need to do and this is what we need to do this and this is what we need to say and this is what we need to teach. Trip. And young people are led into spiritual shipwreck because of clowns and pulpits saying it's all right to do this and it's all right to do the other thing. That's not the God of my Bible, I can tell you. And here's the man of God now, great man, and he was. But he was fooled by a spiritual lie. You know what Romans chapter 1 verse 25 says? The days will come when they will turn the truth of God into a lie. The devil tried to do it with the Lord Jesus in the wilderness of temptation. The devil even quoted Psalm 91 to try and get the Lord Jesus to sin. And the devil has men up in pulpits today quoting the Word of God to convince men and women, and young people especially, to go their way when it's not the right way. Listen, you know what we all need today? The spirit of wisdom and the sermon. Romans chapter 12, verse 2 says this, be ye not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, that ye may prove what is good and acceptable and that perfect will of God. The will of God for your life, brother, and the will of God for my life, and the will of God for your life, sister, is inside the Word of God. God's will for your life, God's will for my life, is never outside the Word of God, never. The man that was made, the instruction that was intense, the deceit that was deadly, the folly, the folly that followed. Look at the last bit. 
the judgment that was just. Verse 23, And it came to pass after he had eaten bread and after he had drunk, that he saddled the ass. Sorry, and it came to pass after he had eaten bread and after he had drunk, that he saddled for him the ass to wit that the prop to, for the prophet whom he had brought back. And when he had gone, a lion met him by the way and slew him, and his carcass was cast in the way, and the ass stood by it, and the lion also stood by the carcass. Do you know what the lesson is all of this, child of God? Here's the lesson. It greatly displeases God when his children disobey his word. Don't you ever think, child of God, it's a late thing to disobey the word of the Lord. God is greatly displeased at the sins of his own people. And especially those people who are very much in his word. No child of God is protected in disobedience from God's punishment. God's chastening rod. Here's another wee lesson. There's too many boys today and they're preaching against the sin in the lives of other believers and what they're doing. And they fail to preach the sin that's going on in their own lives. boys today and they're slamming everybody for doing this and they're slamming everybody for they're nearly slam you for smiling and yet in all the sin that's going on in their own life and they preach against that but yet in all when it comes to their own family it's a different kettle of fish I know a minister and his ruling was and a young lassie was expecting before they were married. On their wedding day, they were never to walk down the aisle from the front door. She only allowed them to walk in through the side door to the front. That was his room. And when his own daughter got pregnant, when his own daughter got pregnant, it's just a pity he didn't practice what he preached for he marched her down the aisle. And people preach against that until it comes to their own family. And it would surprise you what goes on today in churches when ministers when preach against everybody else, but when it comes to their own children and it comes to their own home, the rules are bent to suit and God doesn't like it. This man preached against the sin of Jeroboam, but I'll tell you this, he was disobedient himself when it came to him. Should have knew better. And as I bring this message to a close, here's a wee thought that the Lord wants me to leave with you as I bring it to a close. That's how a Christian can be reduced to a carcass through one act of disobedience. One act of disobedience can wreck your testimony. One act of disobedience can wreck your minister. What, ministry. One act of disobedience can wreck your life. And you see Luke chapter, or 1 Kings chapter 13 this morning, you just think of this, there go I but for the grace of God. You and I have been given our Bibles today to live by, not just to read, but to live by. You see the carcass. This is the man of God. 
who was disobedient unto the word of the Lord. What an epitaph to put in his grave. What an epitaph to put in his headstone. This here lies the man of God that was disobedient unto the word of the Lord. And a lifetime of ministry can be dissolved into nothing through one act of disobedience. The child of God, our closing hymn says it all this morning, yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. And may we all stay close to the Lord in total obedience to his will. Our closing hymn.